then you're really not going to know what I'm talking about. But y'all know me. I like to jump into all realms of realities and clear up all lostness and indoctrination amongst the whole world. And based upon how I look, I know people probably won't take me serious. And that's why I'm here right now as Archangel Uriel to clear up all perspectives so you can understand things with the most clarity. And you don't have to jump on Google all the time you hear a new word that another man or woman then put together. Because, you know, it's all coming from the same frequency vibration. Now, check this out. This philosophical video right here is about what is fine tuning and the fine tuned argument. I repeat, what is fine tuning and the uh, fine tuned argument. Now, for the most part, what is fine tuning first? Now, check this out. Before you have to go on Google and things of that nature, just sit back and understand what is being told to you. First of all, you're hearing fine. Now, what is fine? And we could we could talk about it as you getting a fine from police and things of that nature or the law, or we could talk about it being a fine in geometry or gematria or or mathematics in some way, shape, or form. So when we talk about fine in that realm of reality, this is something that's detail orientated. This is something that's the micro version of the macro of something that's being held up. You know what I'm saying? This is the smaller version of something. The little of something. So when you hear something like, we just need a fine piece of hair, they're talking about just a string or two. They're not talking about the whole lump sum. So for the most part, now you know that's what fine is. Now mix that with tune. Fine tuning. Now, tuning. Think about tuning in to something. Think about a radio station that you're trying to adjust in order to get to the right frequency so the radio station can play clear. All right? So you are adjusting something based upon tuning. So mix these things together. Fine tuning. You're trying to adjust something that's small. So for the most part, if you are a scientist, you're trying to take this hypothesis and mix and mingle it into whatever that you're studying at the moment. So now you know what fine tuning is. Now people are utilizing this hy hypothesis, which is made up for uh, for actual argument. Because here's the thing: it's a hypothesis that a scientist would sit back and see how it plays out in life, and if they can catch it. To see how this hypothesis play out in life, then they can start to calculate it into a routine and pattern to see what it's actually made of. Now, here's where you get to the uh, theists and how they utilize this goddamn argument. They turn it into an argument. They utilize what scientists then came up came up with, which is fine tuning, and then they use this to support their their demon that they're following, which that they call God. So here's the thing: a theist or a person who use apologetics or something like that would say that there have to be an overall mind, a, a disembodied mind, or an overall creator, or overall spirit that had to um, that had to do the fine tuning. AKA there had to be some overall authority that's doing the adjustments in order for life to sustain itself. So for the most part, they're they're trying to say in order for it to be life. There had to be a fine tuner. Otherwise, what is the purpose of fine tuning? But here's the thing. This is where you catch all these motherfuckers at. This is where you got to stop them at. You got to actually ask them like, okay, what do you see that's actually fine tuned? What do you see? Because you're just utilizing an argument to support your religion. You're not actually saying that your religious or your demon God actually did some fine tuning. Actually is adjusting the world just right enough for life to exist. Because that means you're blind in some way, shape, or form. And you have to ask them what's being adjusted. And just go ahead and listen to all the rhetoric and all the dumb shit that they're saying and things of that nature. Then, that, then that's when you sit back and be like, okay, you must be lost to even be utilizing a fine-tuned argument. Because if you was to actually look at life, life wouldn't exist without the clashing of two objects. I don't care what realm of reality, what shape and form, what scientific method, how you try to look at it. In some way, shape, or form, life wouldn't be life without the clashing of two objects. And the clashing of two objects is actually a, an example of death. So whatever you are lost in to think that you're calling life is actually a version of death. And it wouldn't even exist without the clashing of two objects. See how that just happened? See how the ashes just popped up? Now, God damn it! now do some philosophical thinking of that with your religious mind and sit back and think what the fuck I just said. And, and think about how whatever you think you call life and whatever you think is called sustaining, explain to me how it ain't an, a representation or an example of two objects clashing in, running to each other. Now, when you two, when you see two big-ass objects clashing to each other, you look at it like a cataclysm or a catastrophic event because it's an object that's outside of you. But in order for you to sustain yourself in this lifetime, there's many versions of that happening. There's many versions of explosions. There's many versions of what y'all want to call... Um, um, what they call that, uh, 
the Big Bang. There's many different versions of this happening on a very small, microscopic scale. And that's the only reason you are walking in existence in a shape and form, uh, which you are lost in anyway as a spirit. Now, what I want to break down is the goddamn spirit, but then here's where atheists or scientists and the religious people may get spooked out because religious people do not know about the spirit. They think they do, and atheists don't believe in the spirit, so they lack belief in themselves. So they always need some type of external person that believe in themselves in order to understand any form of information. So here's where I come into this motherfucker. You need to understand this, right? So when we're talking about fine-tuning as a spirit, right? We're all spirits. We all have our own space. We're all no thing, no shape and form. And based upon what you want in and out of your space, you start to emit, create mentalities, chakras, lights, influences. And the longer we do this as spirits, it start to develop into fleshly fluids. This is why stars are water. Now, if you're a religious person and you don't understand when I say stars are water, your motherfucking Bible is telling you this. You just don't got the eyes to see. You just don't got the ears to hear because you're too busy lost into what Peter was talking about and Paul and them. So God damn it, you can only see the world based upon how they seen the world. So based upon one spirit in the body coming up with a mentality, thinking they seen something, the only way you think that you're riding they same frequency vibration is if you see things the same way they seen, seen things. So based upon you just trying to follow somebody else because you're, you're hoping you see a mentality or see an idea the same way they seen the idea, and who said they seen that in their mind? When every scripture is explaining how what someone else seen in their mind. Now, it's like you're retarded, low-key, like psychologically, but that's a whole nother video. But we're going to talk about fine-tuning. Like, like I said, things ain't adjusted just motherfucking right and things of that nature because we're talking about destruction. So this based upon spirits getting lost in their desires. As a spirit, we create man and woman. That's masculine and, uh, and feminine energies, a.k.a. once we externalize these energies we create, it becomes lights atoms and lucifers things we get lost in and the more we get lost into these things it materialize and become to a physical realm of reality that we are all sharing so for the most part just based upon us getting lost into our desires you create a chakra i create a chakra when both of our influences crash it creates an orb in the middle and we both can sustain in that realm of reality whether we're relatable or it could be destructive if we highly unrelatable and volatile in that area and it's based upon all, all those orbs we are creating this is what we call sex the joining of two energies to create another so this ain't and a religious person don't even know what I'm talking about right now. This is why I'm talking about that they ain't spiritual. Because what I'm talking about, this is all levels. So you could be joining mentalities. And that both of y'all mentalities share the same direction. Then for the most part, that means y'all in the same elemental space. So that means it'll be a harmonious sex. And both of y'all ideas clash externally. Then for the most part, that means it's coming from two different perspectives. Or they're clashing at a 180 degree angle. So for the most part, this means they're two separate energies in, or in two separate spaces. So when both of y'all ideas clashed, it played out as an opposing difference of, of ideas or difference of views. So this is talk about your mentality. And your mentality and thought forms, these are physical. But they're physical in the 4th, 5th, and 6th dimension. But since that dimension is lighter in frequency, this is not an up and down thing. This is a within and without thing. An expansion and contraction thing. So for the most part, you can only live within something until you get born out something. So you're always creating shapes and forms to get to these realms and realities. So when we talk about something that's light, it's light as in weight. This is why we develop mass. Man, the masculine energy. So for the most part, that's just us pushing off thought forms and feelings and emotions. So don't get it fucked up. So if you get washed up under Norse art, it's because you didn't got lost in your desires and you didn't know how to rise above the new age, the new times, aka a new transit, because the planets ain't giving us those same influences that they was going through those trial and tribulations to give off to give off testimonies. Now, for them, for we can testify in during these times. Now, and write scriptures and strip and shit. So you need to know, don't get lost in light. You thinking they're people? You didn't turn star man into a man in some way, shape, or form. That's another video. But like I said. And you the first people to tell people that they're deifying things. You lost in a, in a more indoctrinated version of astrology. But look, check this out. Also, when you want to get into the concept of being lost in our desires. So when, when we create a bunch of lights and things of that nature, these things clash. And once that clash, right, as a spirit, we have to adjust it so we don't fall all the way down with it. So for the most part, we fine-tune our own motherfucking lives. And based upon us wanting to be relatable with each other, this is where fine-tuning come from. So as a spirit, we ain't got no choice but to come up with these hypotheses because this is what we're doing as goddamn spirits, fine-tuning our own lives. And if we stay in the world together, then we're trying to fine-tune ourselves around each other so we can match our same frequency vibrations and be around the people, places, and things that we are uh, that we want to be around that's more in our favor and we can be satisfied or comfortable. Otherwise, we live chaotic, unbalanced, uncomfortable, and we are in search of that. 
that, aka we are un untuned at the moment. We are unaligned at the moment. So this is where the concept of fine tune come from in the first place. It's just what we're actually doing. So this is what you need to understand. Ain't no such thing as a goddamn how the motherfucker that they're trying to talk about. Because they'll get you motherfucking lost. They'll make you think that it's some type of supernatural energy and things of that nature. How motherfuckers was coming up to what mathematical conclusions within the Bible. Where it ain't nothing but astrology. If you understand the goddamn 12 houses, you understand the cell, seven planets. Then you will understand that uh, us based upon uh, Gematria and us correlating the number system and numerology. And it being back to supported by... Uh, by uh by meanings and reasonings, this is how we was able to come up with uh with sentences and things of that. Like I was just watching a debate and shit like that with uh scholar scholar fiction and and uh, uh some dude named uh Matt Slick. That's a, a, a apologetics or some shit like that, a Calvinist and shit. And uh, this is what you need to understand. He was in the debate. He was actually trying to break down gematria and break down numerology and astrology in the Bible as if this is some supernatural stuff that a human can't do. I do this shit every day. I do that motherfucking shit every day. What the fuck is he talking about? Now, he, he broke it down as in, like, can't no man did it, yet he's explaining it from some, some man or woman writing it down. How was you even, how, where did you even get that from if a man and woman didn't write it? So once you start to talk about all the only thing that they're doing is understanding the mathematical travels of the 12 planets and, the, I mean, the, the 12 houses and the seven planets traveling through it. And once we go through testimonies and experiences, we're, we're able to develop meanings and reasonings behind the symbols and the shapes that we create down here. So when you want to say the number one, instead of, instead of one being adding or subtracting something, one will mean individuality. One will mean separation. One will mean single, sub, singling itself out. So when you see one in, in the letter that's attached to the number one, here's how you start to develop certain synthesis, right? When you get the number two, number two means duality. Number two means out outside of yourself number two means relating so once you get all the letters under number two and put them together and once you go on and so forth with all the letters here's how you can make a whole sentence that just got that each each number could mean i mean each letter could mean a number and it can be seven it can be seven words and then they all include to a number aka numerology astrology it's not that hard to understand once you know that numbers is way more than just adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing that's it. When you talk about three, three is representing surroundings. Your surroundings. When you talk about four, four representing thoughts, mentalities, the, 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 the ability to give ideas and thoughts to the shapes and forms that you see in the third dimension, in the three, which is the surroundings. Fourth dimensional is the ability to communicate or give thoughts or give meanings or give ideas to these things. Fifth dimensional is your ability, five is your ability to have an emotional reaction or influence or to be emotionally influenced by these things and to give it a real meaning behind it. Six. Six is to give it attention. Once it gives it so much attention, it really starts to take shape and form and manifest in our lives. But that's a whole nother video before people understand. Once we get to motherfucking seven, seven is a motherfucking, uh, they call it the angelic number, but this is boxing ourselves out, right? Wisdom and knowledge, having wisdom and knowledge about what we're giving attention to. Once we start to experience what we're giving attention to, we start to have wisdom and knowledge about it in our way. You see what I'm saying? So that's basically gematria. And that's basically how humans use gematria. And this is how you can go create your own language. And you don't have to lean and support on somebody else's language. Just to understand what we're all perceiving as motherfucking spirits. So don't get lost by no motherfucking demonic ass spirits in this shit. Trying to make you uh, seem like the, this shit we get lost in. The Lucifer. Hermeneutics. Uh, Mount Hermon. Uh, and all this kind of shit like that. All this is uh, the demons teaching you how to logically confuse yourself. How to logically come up with different languages. How to how to uh, logically be in Babylon. Not this false Babylon like fake consciousness teachers be teaching y'all. The Babylon of everybody clinging towards a language that we have built it. And, we, and you only understand these words based upon whoever created that language, the meanings and reasons they gave behind it. And that's why a lot of times we be having multiple meanings behind one word. Because a lot of times the frequency vibration means something that the word don't even mean. But whoever spirit in a body creating language is wanting it to mean in certain ways and making you utilize it because they see the energy and they, the way they see fit is who the fuck you rule by. And now you, now you really know who the fucking demon is. God damn it. And that's another fucking video, goddammit. But that's fine tuning. Fine tune is just something, some, adjusting something that's very small. And this is what we do in our lives spiritually. For the most part, we need to uh, adjust the very small responsibilities that we have in our lives in order to conduct ourselves so we can all be relatable. Otherwise, this motherfucker concept of a fine tuning argument makes no goddamn motherfucking sense. Flight boss, bitch, goddamn.